Across the Fence will focus on the Vermont State Animal, the Morgan Horse, and will meet Vermonters who are dedicated to preserving and protecting Morgan Horse history and providing education about the historic breed to the public. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The popular and well-known Morgan Horse can be found across the country, but the breed's beginnings are in New England, specifically in Vermont. Preserving the Morgan's history is one goal of the Morgan Horse Heritage Foundation. Today we're going to learn more about the work of the nonprofit foundation. And be, to begin, I'm joined by the foundation's Vice President, Marilyn Childs. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank it's a you. treat. Well, tell me a little bit about the foundation, when it got started, and what does it do? Well, the foundation actually got started in uh, 2005. But uh, can I go back a little bit in Absolutely. history? Because we have to have a reason for being founded. Um, the Morgan people all over the country had wanted to have a permanent home for the breed, and uh, the American Morgan Horse Institute was founded to raise money and so forth. And actually, we achieved that goal in 1987 mm -hmm. with a beautiful permanent home in Shelburne, abutting the Shelburne Museum. However, that we also had, and that home became the f headquarters for the breed or registry of the American Morgan Horse Association, and also for a lovely museum. Uh, then down through the years, uh, you want to know how we happened to get started. The AMHI, which had funded the permanent home, suddenly became interested in the Kentucky Horse Park. Hmm. Now the Kentucky Horse Park uh, in the early 2000 uh, years had become a sort of a headquarters for various breed organizations and horse organizations, all of them establishing headquarters at the Kentucky Horse Park. So AMHI thought this was a perfect opportunity for them, so they decided they would build a pavilion, a Morgan Horse Pavilion at the Kentucky Horse Park. And that would then become the headquarters for everything, including the museum. Mm -hmm. At that point, people in Vermont, us horse lovers in Vermont, uh, became very concerned because we wanted to be sure that everything was preserved, the Morgan heritage was preserved in our state. So in 2005, we started organizing, and by 2006, we were organized, had incorporated, and, and had a 501c3. And our mission was to educate people about the Morgan, as all of these organizations do. They're kind of convoluted, AMHI, AMHA, mm -hmm. and MHHF now, um, all trying to promote the Morgan horse. But our mission was to maintain the Morgan heritage history in Vermont and be sure that it was preserved here. So now a lot of Vermonters first learn about Justin Morgan, the story in, in grade school reminds us of how the Morgan became synonymous with Vermont. Can you tell me a little bit about that? How the story of Justin Morgan? Well, I think the book, Justin Morgan Had a Horse, has really done the promotion for our breed above everything else. And of course we had the movie also. Mm -hmm. So uh, that has done it, I think. The fact that it is the state animal is not being promoted as much as it should be. I think a lot of people, in fact, one of the governors visiting my town, and I asked him about the state animal, he said the Holstein cow, Aww. and I immediately corrected him. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the projects or educational programs that the foundation has been involved with? Well, uh, we've been in, into a lot of them, but I think the b biggest thing that we have done recently is uh, preserve the skeleton of Black Hawk. And I and think- some pictures you can see here. Here's the skeleton. I, yeah. So why is that important? Why is that important? Well, Black Hawk uh, became the most famous trotter of his day and preceded Ethan Allen, which then became a well-known trotter. Uh, he was, uh, he died in 1856, and uh, an affidavit from his owner, David Hill, in 1961, pointed out that the skeleton was at the Museum of Natural History in Boston, Massachusetts. 
it moved from there to the University of Massachusetts campus at Amherst. And then at, at one point, they were moving their buildings and uh, willing to let the skeleton go. So Dr. Donald Balls from the University of Vermont, Morgan Horse Farm, went to Amherst, Massachusetts and brought the skeleton here to the University of Vermont in Weybridge in 1952. And so there was also another project that you've been working on too, the, the Gravestone Project. Yeah, the Gravestone Project is my, my current one. I'm very interested in collecting gravestone pictures of Morgan horses because those gravestones will contain the history of the Morgan breed long after you and I and many others are dead and gone. Now you have some examples that you want to show us of those gravestones. I do have uh, some gravestone pictures that I would like to show you, but first uh, I would show you the original. I'm going to hold this up so the camera can see it here. Uh, the original uh, where Justin Morgan was buried, this is in West Springfield, Massachusetts, with a plaque above it. Mm -hmm. and. Our organization actually got this cleaned up and, and fixed so that it is now open to view for many others. But then, of course, we have Justin Morgan himself buried here in Chelsea, Vermont. Uh, this is a picture out by the roadside. And this is a picture off of our hay field where they really believe he is buried. Then. Uh, Continuing, here is the cemetery at the University of Vermont Morgan Farm with so many of the founders of our breed buried there. And lastly, the last gravestone I got a picture of was this one, which is in Maine, and it is of a horse that competed and won internationally in carriage driving competition. So uh, I've had them from Nova Scotia, farthest east, and the farthest west I've gotten so far is Arizona. <laughs> so now tell me a little bit about um, how you've been able to achieve your goal, because these kinds of things cost money. Yes, these things do cost money, and uh, our group is forever having fundraising events. Uh, there is hardly a equine affair that we don't have a booth of things to sell. And of course, at all of the Morgan shows, we are present. But then in addition, uh, we have now a new project, uh, selling a book, America's Own. Yep, which is right here. America's Own. We're trying to get that in libraries all across the country because this book is a great promotion for the Morgan horse, and we hope that it will result in a lot of new owners of Morgan horses. Talk a little bit about the indoor clinic as well. How did that come about? Well, the big, the big thing at the moment is our April 5 indoor equine clinic and lunch. This is uh, a big, thing and uh, we take great pride in it because last year was our first year and we featured four clinicians all of whom were judges recognized by the United States Equestrian Federation. This year uh, two of those from last year are coming back plus new ones. Now, do you want me to tell you more about that clinic? Well, yes. Well, when, what's when, different? Is, when is the clinic this year, and how can people get information? Okay. Uh, it is April 5 at the Sharon Elementary School, which is conveniently located at exit 2 of I-89. I can always supply information about it. But um, our clinicians this year are starting off with one that is going to offer something quite new to the horse community. We have a veterinarian who specializes in acupuncture and chiropractic. And I have to say, I've had two friends who have told me that they have solved difficult problems with acupuncture. 
So anyway, this is a new opportunity for people to come and hear of this clinician on acupuncture and other chiropractic technologies. The other one uh, that is new this year is a farrier. And we have a farrier who will, of course, address any hoof care problems and so forth. But this farrier takes particular pride in problems that people have and sh the shoeing that has to be done for that. Mm -hmm. So that is a new one. Then uh, thirdly, um, we have a repeat clinician who is an absolute specialist in producing winning horses. He's produced champions for saddle, harness, Western, hunting, whatever. He is going to focus this year on something that I feel is quite neglected by most horse people. And that is the mouthing and bidding and preparation of a horse to go on. And uh, after they have been properly bidden, mm -hmm. Probably the next step, here's a picture of a horse being line driven. Mm -hmm. And then, things go well, here is a UVM Morgan driven by Steve Davis. This is a three year old in harness. And we want to mention that Steve is another presenter. He's the executive director of the UVM Morgan Horse Farm in Weybridge. He spent more than 40 years working at the farm, which is dedicated to the preservation and improvement of the Morgan horse. Under Steve's leadership, the farm provides a variety of educational programs and experiences for a wide range of students. So while we just have a few minutes left, and I want to come back to the library initiative that Marilyn mentioned earlier uh, and the, the book America's Own and why the Morgan is so important. Joining us now is a member of the Morgan Horse Heritage Foundation, Kathy Furr. Welcome to you. Thank you. Kathy, tell me about this book. I know you want to read a, a segment for us. It starts at the race. Um, Almanza Wilder had his team. The crowd watched the uh, first team, which was a bay team, hitched to a light buggy. The bays were perfectly matched and they stepped through the, as though the buggy weighed nothing at all. Then came the other teams, other buggies, but Laura hardly saw them for there was a team of brown horses that she knew. She knew their proud gay heads and arching necks, the shine of light on their satiny shoulders, the black manes blowing and the forelocks tossing above their quick, bright, gentle eyes. Oh, look, Carrie, look, it's the brown Morgans, she cried. That's Amonza Wilder's team, boast, said Pa. What in creation has he got him hitched to? High up on the horses, high above the horses, Amonza Wilder was sitting, his hat pushed back on his head, but he looked cheerful and confident. He turned the team towards its place in line, and they saw that he was sitting on a high seat on top of a long, high, heavy wagon with a door on its side. It's his brother Royal's peddler's wagon, said a man standing nearby. He don't have a chance with weight against all those light buggies, said another. Everyone was looking at the Morgan and the wagon and talking about them. The off-horse Prince was the one he drove last winter, that 40-mile trip that he and Cape Garland made and brought in the wheat that kept us all from starving to death, Pa told Mr. Boast. The other one's lady that ran off with the antelopes heard that time. They both got good action and speed. Kathy, I I'm going to interrupt you there because I, want to, I don't want to give away the rest of the story. I want people to read that. I want to thank you both for joining us today and remind you that sign up is April 5th for the indoor clinic um, at the Sharon Elementary School. The website is morganhorseheritagefoundation.com. I want to thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you so thank much you. for having us. Very informative. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.